There are times in dealing with trigonometric functions where having an exponent on your trigonometric function makes it more difficult to handle. So therefore, we can look at ways to reduce the power on your trigonometric function. To do this, we will begin by looking at a warm-up. So we will take a look at cosine of 2 theta, and we will rewrite sine squared of theta by using our double angle identity. So cosine of 2 theta using just sine squared of theta is 1 minus 2 sine squared of theta. But we can go ahead and solve that for sine squared of theta. So we can subtract 1 from both sides. Now because we have a negative, let's go ahead and divide everything by negative 1. So we'll do that term by term. And so at this point, what we have is we have 1 minus cosine of 2 theta equals 2 times sine squared of theta. Now if we divide everything by 2, this means that sine squared of theta will equal 1 minus cosine of 2 theta all over 2. Likewise, for cosine squared of theta, we can rewrite cosine of 2 theta as 2 cosine squared of theta minus 1. Let's add 1 to both sides. That would yield 1 plus cosine of 2 theta equals 2 cosine squared of theta. Now if we divide everything by 2, we'd have 1 plus cosine of 2 theta over 2 equals cosine squared of theta. So cosine squared of theta equals 1 plus cosine of 2 theta all over 2. This now yields for us three identities. The power reducing formula for sine squared of theta, the power reducing formula for cosine squared of theta, and now how do we obtain the power reducing formula for tangent squared of theta? We take the quotient of the previous two. So we should memorize these three. So we are going to take sine squared of theta, cosine squared of theta, and we're going to rewrite that so that it does not involve a power of sine or cosine greater than 1. So if we look at sine squared of theta times cosine squared of theta, we can rewrite this so that sine squared of theta is 1 minus cosine of 2 theta over 2 and cosine squared of theta, we can rewrite so that it's 1 plus cosine of 2 theta over 2. And now, let's go ahead and multiply these together. So if we multiply the numerators together, this is a lot like a difference of squares. So the outside and inside terms will add to 0. And so we have 1 minus cosine squared of 2 theta all over 4. But what you notice here is that cosine squared of 2 theta has a power greater than 1, which is not desirable for this problem. So let's reduce the power yet again. So this is equal to 1 minus, and we'll reduce the power on cosine squared of 2 theta. Cosine squared of 2 theta will be 1 plus cosine double the angle all over 2. Now there's a trick that we can do. This is something like 4 over 1. So we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2. Where'd the 2 come from? I look at any fractions and I look at the LCD of those fractions. So I have 2 and I have 1, 
so the LCD is 2. So I'll multiply the numerator and denominator by 2. So if I multiply by 2, I get 2. Then I have minus, and I'm going to subtract off the whole expression here. 1 plus cosine 4 theta all over 2 multiplied by 2 will just be 1 plus cosine of 4 theta. 1 plus cosine of 4 theta. But this was all being subtracted. That fraction was being subtracted. So even after I cancel, that whole quantity will be uh, will be subtracted. The denominator will be 8. And so what we have now is 2 minus 1 minus cosine of 4 theta all over 8. So we have 1 minus the cosine of 4 theta over 8. So notice now the power and cosine of 4 theta is simply 1.